AI models today are incredibly smart and capable. They can chat, write, summarize, and think almost like an actual human. But if you only use them as chat applications, you'll know that right now they are somewhat limited to just talking back to us. But did you know that we can also make them interact with the real world and actually do things? So this is where MCP comes in. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. If your AI model is like a brain, then MCP is a way to give it arms and legs. What this actually means in practice is that MCP acts as a protocol for AI models to interact with APIs that can live either online or be running on your local computer. So now our AI can go from just returning text responses to performing actual tasks. Today we are going to build an MCP server using Spring Boot, which an AI model can call to perform tasks on our system. We'll be using Claude Desktop as our MCP client, which internally will use Claude Sonnet as an AI model, and it will call the MCP server that we will build to perform actions. So as an example, our MCP server will be built as a shopping cart service. Here we will be able to create a shopping list where we can add, remove and list items. By the end of this video, we will be able to type in something like add two packets of milk to my shopping list and our AI application should actually call the application that we build, which will store them as a shopping list on our system. Also, by the way, if you don't want to use Claude Desktop, there are many other MCP clients available and we can even build our own, but we'll use Claude Desktop for now for simplicity. Let's start by setting up our Spring Boot application. We can go to the Spring Initializer page. Over here, we'll choose the default options for our language and framework versions, and we'll just give a name to our artifact or application. For our dependencies, the crucial one that we need to add is the Model Context Protocol server. After we've done this, we can download the starting application code. Now let's take a look at our code. If we look at our pom.xml file, we can see that the Spring MCP server dependency has been added. Next, let's look at our application.properties file. This is essential for configuring our MCP server to ensure that it works properly. We set the server type to sync, which means that we're running a synchronous server for our requests and responses. We set the MCP server name and version, which helps the MCP client identify our server. We'll need to set the web application type to none because we're telling Spring Boot not to start a web server. This is because our MCP server will communicate using standard input output or STDIO and not through HTTP or REST APIs that we would normally expect from a web server. We also need to set the banner mode to off and the console logging pattern as empty. These two settings will disable any other logs from Spring Boot from coming into the standard output so that it doesn't interfere with the messages exchanged between the MCP client and server as a part of the STDIO communication. All other standard logs are redirected to a file so that they don't interfere either. Now let's look at the core logic for our MCP server. We've created a class called shopping cart which we will annotate as a Spring Boot service. This contains the actual logic for our shopping list. First, let's define a shopping item, which will just consist of a name and a quantity. Then we'll define a concurrent hash map to store all the shopping items in memory. So now how does the AI or our MCP client know about the methods that are available in our MCP server? Well, this is done through the tool annotation. In this annotation, we will add a name and a description. These parameters are very important. The description is basically the text given to our AI model for it to determine whether it needs to use the tool or not. So this value should completely describe what the functionality of this method is. The input parameter names are also important because Spring AI typically uses these exact names to map the inputs that the AI extracts from the user's request to the tool's arguments. Finally, we have our return value. Whatever your Java method returns will often be serialized and sent back to the AI model. The AI model then uses this returned information in its response to the user or to make further decisions. So now coming back to our shopping cart, let's look at the first method, which is used to add an item to the shopping list. We've added a name and description that allows our AI model to know that this method is used to add items for our shopping list or update its quantity. And further, that the client or AI model will need to specify the item's name and quantity. Our parameters are also named name and quantity to clearly signal what they mean. So as we saw before, the names here are important. 
So make sure to name your argument variables according to what they are actually supposed to describe. Here we're just doing some initial validation and adding a new shopping item to the concurrent hash map shopping list. If an item already exists, we are updating its quantity. Finally, we are returning a string talking about the quantity and name of the item that we've added to our shopping list. We also have methods to get all the items from our shopping list and to remove items from our shopping list. Feel free to pause and go through these as well. Now let's look at our main application class. We annotate it here with the Spring Boot application annotation and the main method is used to actually start the application. But in addition to this, we also need to define a bean method here that returns a list of tool callbacks. This is how our MCP client will get the list of tools that are exposed by our MCP server. The shopping cart service is auto injected here by Spring Boot and we convert it into a list of callbacks and return it. So now let's run this. We can go to our terminal and call the MVN Spring Boot run command to check if everything is working. You can ignore this logging error for now since it's caused by the empty pattern that we added earlier to prevent logs to the console. Besides that, if there are no other errors, our application should be running fine. So now we can set up this server in our Claude desktop application. If the application works using the Spring Boot run command, we can compile it into a jar file by running the MVN package command, after which we can see that the jar file is present in our target folder. Now we can set up the server in our Claude desktop application. To do this, open the settings in Claude desktop and edit the developer settings. When you click this button, it will show you the JSON file where the configuration is stored. We can open it up and add the command here to start our server. I have already added the configuration for my machine and it's just the Java command followed by the location of our jar file. We can now save the settings and restart Claude desktop. And now we should see our server appearing in the tool menu. Here we can see all the methods that we've defined in our code. So let's test it out. Let's say we want to add a few packets of milk to our shopping list. We can just say this in plain English. And now we can see that the AI model decides that this request would be best answered by our MCP server and then actually calls the method to add four packs of milk to our shopping list. We can try adding some more things in plain English and we can see that it works pretty well. So now if you want to see what's currently on our list, we can again just ask in plain English. This will call our MCP server to get all items currently in the list. Our MCP server will respond with what is currently stored and our client will then use the AI model to answer in plain English. What's cool about this is that it's not just like a regular chat with an AI model because this data is actually being stored on our local machine. This means if we start a new chat and ask what's on my shopping list, it will again call our MCP server and show the items from our shopping list that we added in our previous chat. Now this worked pretty well in our example because our application is quite simple. But if it doesn't work, you can even debug this by looking at the exact request and response that have been sent to our MCP server. So we've seen the simple application, but as you've probably imagined, this is incredibly powerful. It allows us to use any AI model as a sort of brain, which reasons about what should be done. And the actual execution of the task can be performed by our MCP server. So in our example, it was a simple shopping list, but we can even implement things like browsing the file system or even something like moving a robot arm in the real world. The possibilities are endless and frameworks like Spring AI make it incredibly easy to get started and create an MCP server from scratch. I've added links in the description for the complete tutorial and the code that we've discussed here. So feel free to go through it and create your own MCP server. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.